roots of these fig trees run as deep as the farming roots of Vani Scribante. His ancestors hauled their ox wagon onto this patch of land nearly 170 years ago and pushed fig branches into the ground to make their first cattle pen. Nearly two centuries later, the branches have grown into mighty trees. I feel I belong. That's where my uh, older generations, uh, they uh, rested under these trees. And uh, I have a great grandmother that uh, they had their 100th birthday party under these trees in 1924 or somewhere. Now, for the first time in nearly two centuries of working this land of De Vilt, half an hour's drive from Pretoria, this family is thinking of saying goodbye to it. The reason? An offer from the government of the former Soviet Republic of Georgia to go and farm. Vani Skribanti led a delegation of South African farmers to Georgia a few weeks ago. We found a place hmm, that is devastated by communism and socialism. Uh, absolutely miles and miles behind, years behind. I, I would say 80 years ago when that happened to them, development virtually stopped. We also found a young generation that really want to break out of that situation. The offer to skilled South African farmers is the chance to buy, freehold, up to 88,000 hectares of good farmland in Georgia. Even before we went, when the story started going, we had lots and lots of the, uh, our, our uh, general manager at TAUSA, uh, Mr. Van Sale, said his phone didn't stop ringing of people being interested. And that's not even, most of them was not even members of TAUSA. And that started saying, but that sounds like a vi uh, viable proposition for them. Are we talking hundreds maybe, or thousands? At this stage, I wouldn't say uh, uh, thousands, but I would say hundreds of people uh, are already interested in it. One reason is the historical link between Georgia and the Afrikaners of South Africa. A Georgian nobleman, Nico Bagriatoni, fought on the side of the Boers against the British in the Anglo-Boer War. He is one of the interesting figures. He wasn't one of the heroes in the sense that he, he, did, he, he did something very brave during the war. He was a good good marksman so he could shoot well although he'd never been in the army but this is the kind of figure that one builds little myths all around or you you empower this man and say look this is the kind of man that can bring a good relationship between the Georgians and the South Africans this happened in 1900 it can happen again in 2010-2011 the climate is good in Georgia, say the South Africans. They say they can grow everything there from grapes to maize to avocados. But the political climate may not be so clement, with Georgian opposition politicians against the idea. Our government is pursuing a policy of betraying their own country, purposefully and consciously creating problems for Georgian peasants and farmers. The locals cannot cultivate their own land and they have to leave their homes and the land that belongs to them. In addition, the authorities are strengthening sanctions on uncultivated land, which will result in mass depopulation of Georgian regions. The government already started talks on relocating the Boers from South Africa. Specifically, they are planning to relocate 41,000 Boer families to these regions. And you will see how the ethnic balance in the country and the overall situation will change. But the South African farmers say they still have Georgia on their mind. It remains to be seen how many farmers are likely to give up all of this to go farming in Georgia in the former Soviet Union. On Wednesday, there's a meeting of farmers in Pretoria. And from that meeting, we may get a sense of how many are likely to take up the offer.